What's good YouTube, it's your boy KC and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is finally releasing for Japan in close to two weeks now. That being said, we already know what's going to be in 95% of the game by now. And by we, I mean like me and five other people because this game was announced almost a year and a half ago. And I have been there since day one. I'm not joking, most of my videos on my channel are about a game that's not even out yet. God damn. So rather than to trust some game journalists that don't even know Dynasty Warriors, here's everything new and returning for Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, organized and as compact as possible. Alright, so starting off we have the main mode and politics system. It's been confirmed that the politics slash strategy phase would be just as strong as the previous entry Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. And like that game, you can play as a vagrant slash free officer to a vagabond leader, to an officer, marshal, strategist, or ruler if you'd like. And it's the same goal for any Empire's game, gather resources and strengthen your armies for battle until you conquer ancient China. So a really 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 nice returning feature from Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires are the 6 fame types or reputation types. These traits will affect a lot of things including whether or not a character likes you and or your chances of recruiting them to your army. On top of that there will be an overall good slash evil affinity that will affect cutscenes and events. As far as new features go, there is a lot to unpack here. Bonds slash relationships seem to matter a whole lot more in this entry. So in the politics phase, other officers are going to be working on resource orders as you will be too. And you can gain extra resources by working together with those officers. And your bonus rewards will be based on your relationship with that officer. Characters with a high enough relationship can also gift you various gifts like stratagems, like in Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. You can also order a character unit around in battle regardless of your rank, meaning if you're a commoner but you're friends with the ruler, then you can order them around basically. Also a ton of unique dialogue, quotes, and cutscenes are unlocked as your bond with the character grows. They even confirmed the return of the Dynasty Warriors 7 Empire's spouse slash sworn sibling death cutscene. Another thing is that your rank also apparently matters a little bit more now. Officers can suggest things in councils and marshals and strategists can host invasions like in Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, but apparently now, only rulers can form alliances. And also, 8 Empires title slash way of life system returns this time with 30 generic titles and 94 unique titles for the existing playable roster. These titles, like in Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, will offer various benefits slash effects on how your officers act, and what they can do. And by far the biggest feature in the politics slash strategy phase is the strolling slash roaming feature. In this mode you can roam freely and interact with affiliated and unaffiliated characters. You can recruit free officers or strengthen bonds with other officers. There's also going to be hunting and bandit encounters confirmed. There's also a chance that special officers can be found in special places and hints will be given out by soldiers. It has also been confirmed that strolling will have no movement limits. This means that the entire open world is free to roam. There is a limit on how many actions that can be taken in one strolling session however. This clip shows that attempting to recruit an officer takes away one action point. Also in this feature you can bring along companions for hunting or photo mode. Emotes can also be used by the player character but not the companion. Now for the gameplay of 9 Empires. It's obviously based on Dynasty Warriors 9's core combat system with minor tweaks here and there. But the real change comes in level design and gameplay flow. Every battle in 9 Empires will be a castle siege and stages are sectioned off from the open world. And with every battle being a siege battle, the traditional supply based battle system was removed, thus allowing for freedom of movement on the battlefield. So for these siege battles, there's going to be an invading side that's looking to break in the castle and defeat the ruler, and a defending side that's trying to survive and repel the forces. For the invading side, there's several key bases that must be captured before you can breach the castle. These key bases hold multiple ways to break in including a battering ram, siege ladders, or catapults. Another new addition to the combat system is the character class system where infantry will beat cavalry, cavalry will beat archers, and archers will beat infantry. It's going to be a triangle system and each character is going to be assigned a class where extra damage is going to be dealt to that class with the disadvantage. There will also be an ability to issue individual orders to your teammates without the use of the menu screen. And with this is also a pair up system that allows for team muso attacks and shared class benefits. Stratagems also make a return and large scale stratagems will have more objectives to fulfill or obstruct if you're on the defending side. And before battle, teammates can suggest a large scale stratagem and choosing them will increase your bond with that said officer. Weapons can also be switched outside of battle and weapon proficiency is confirmed to be a thing. However, your Muso attack and R1 specials will stay as your main weapons attacks. If you want a more in-depth video detail on the combat system, please check out my video on the top right or at the end for my gameplay analysis. And now for the Cradle Warrior or the Edit Mode. 
For the things that are returning, there's going to be 850 custom character slots and 17 groupings that can hold 50 characters each. Custom characters can also be shared online and replacing historical officers will also return. And that's pretty much all the returning stuff. Because edit mode got a complete overall, woo! The character creation was based on Neo 2 system this time around. With that brings the RGB color picker which allows for the biggest color variety in empires ever and mostly everything in edit mode can be modified somewhat. Face decorations like moles and scars will be movable, resizable, and be able to rotate. Head accessories like eye patches can also be flipped and hair is now sectioned into front, back, and side sections. However, the biggest feature in edit mode includes layering between clothes and armor over the clothes and each individual armor piece on top of the clothes can be removed to reveal the clothes under. Also in edit mode, there will be 30 voices per gender, but the pitch slider was removed from Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. Also, a bunch of new edit parts and the ability to set two favorite weapons have also been added. As for the features that I couldn't organize, all 15 DLC weapons in 9 will be included and integrated as default weapons for chosen playable characters like Ling Chi and the Cross Halberd, for example. DLC characters will also be included, meaning there will be 51 unique movesets across 94 unique characters. Photo mode will also be returning along with marriage and sworn siblings. Also, gallery mode will include customizable events like previous Empires games. And Guandu and Cherby historical battles have been confirmed, which are just unique versions of regular battles. As far as DLC goes, a Zhao Yun costume for created characters will be given out the first two weeks of launch. The season pass will include 14 edit parts, five additional palaces, and four military units. And the Digital Deluxe Edition includes three scenarios and bonus custom characters from the Warring States and Chu Han Conflict, including Xiang Yu and Yu Mei Ren. If you know, if you know about those time periods, I guess. I, I barely know about them, so. All right, now that was pretty much everything I covered about Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires in one video. Nine Empires will release in Japan on December 22nd and releases worldwide on February 15th, 2022. But other than that, a huge thank you to Black Kite on Twitter. As always, he translates everything Dynasty Warriors and keeps us informed right from the get-go. And thank you to the Muso community and you guys for all the support on these videos. So again, like the video if you like the video. And I'm going to catch y'all later.